Hey guys, welcome back. We're doing Unit 12, Reduction Oxidation Reactions. Lesson 2, Identifying Oxidative State. Alright guys, so, in this topic, we are going to be covering what are oxidation numbers. We'll be talking about the periodic table of neutral elements, and we'll be going over the rules and some practice problems for you guys on oxidation numbers. So oxidation numbers are positive or negative numbers assigned to an atom to indicate the degree of oxidation, or the loss of electrons, or the reduction, which is the gain of electrons. Uh, all elements on our periodic table are neutral. Remember, they are always, always neutral, uh, unless they are bonded with other elements. Diatomics, however, are also considered neutral. Remember, diatomics are classified as elements. All elements are neutral. And if you forgot what diatomics are, think of the phrase Hofbrinkel or Brinkelhoff. All polyatomic ions, however, are a group of atoms that collectively have a charge, which is the sum of all the oxidation numbers put together. And those are the guys you can find on table E. So let's all look at the periodic table one more time. So this is the standard periodic table that is in your reference table. And one thing you guys need to know is that every element on its own is neutral. And if you guys notice, any of these oxidative charges are only when they're in a bond. So it could be an ionic bond or it could be a covalent bond, but these charges are only when you have some sort of compound or covalent molecule. So rules for oxidation numbers. Whenever you are naming cations, you always write those in the formula first. We've repeatedly said this throughout the year. Hopefully we can remember this. So cations, don't forget, are your metal or your positive charges. So positive charge goes first in the naming, followed by the negative charged ion second. The anions. So now the oxidation number of free elements, or just elements that are uncombined to other elements, is always zero. The oxidation number of monatomic ions equals the charge of that ion. So when the ion is by itself, then it's that charge itself. And then finally, the usual oxidation number of hydrogen is actually positive one. On occasion, though, hydrogen does have a negative one charge, um, and this is when it's combined with less electronegative elements, for instance, calcium. So some more rules for oxidation are that oxygen, as we know, is always going to give a negative two charge, because on the periodic table, oxygen's only charge is negative two. However, there are some exceptions. When you have a compound like oxygen difluoride, which you see is OF2, Oxygen has to have a positive two charge because the fluorines each have a negative one charge. Also, fluorine is highly electronegative, which mm -hmm. is the only reason why oxygen ends up with a positive two, and two, excuse me, positive two in this one scenario. The other scenario would be that if you have a peroxide, which is commonly found in hydrogen peroxide, which is a whitening solution, the O2 molecule in hydrogen peroxide is going to have a negative one charge each. So that's going to be two of the exceptions to the oxygen oxidation number. Other things that we should already know by now is if you're a group one element, you always have a positive one charge. If you're a group two element, you always have a positive two charge. And if you're a group seven, which is anything like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, you guys will always have to know this, but they always have a negative one charge. Just use your reference tables, guys. So. When we're identifying oxidation states, you have to understand that the sum of all the charges together is going to equal zero. Um, the sum of the charges on table E, however, that group of polyatomic ion, that group of elements that make that one polyatomic ion up, is going to have the charge of that entire thing. So for example, NO3 has an overall charge of negative one, which means the sum of the nitrogen and the sum of the three oxygen atoms all together equal negative one. Now, when you're talking about a compound, any compound, a compound consisting of ionic uh, elements or, or, I'm sorry, ionic ions um, or polyatomic ions, you're going to take the sum of the cation charge, add it to the sum of the anion charge, and all of that together should come out to be zero. If they give you another charge, however, just make sure it all equals that, that other charge. Why don't we do one? Sure, we'll start and then, with one. And then they can pause their video. All right, so let's look at carbon dioxide. So when you look at carbon dioxide, you notice you have one carbon mixed with two oxygens. And because it's a neutral compound, you have a charge that is equal to zero. 
from what we've just learned, if you look up the charge of oxygen on your periodic table, you should know it's a negative 2 charge. So you have 2 times that amount, which is negative 4. Therefore, carbon has to have a positive 4 charge to equal that overall 0 neutral charge. Yeah, and if you look on the reference table, carbon does have another selected oxidation state. You have to pick the one that works for the math. Okay, okay. so now pause your video and try the other 5. All right, so when you look at water, you notice you have two hydrogens, one oxygen, again, neutral. And when you do the math, you should notice that your hydrogens have a positive one charge and your oxygen still has that negative two charge. When you look at diatomic fluorine, you gotta know it's neutral. It's a diatomic element. It's not a bond, it's just diatomic. And the so, math shows why it has to be zero. Exactly. So you should give this guy a charge of zero. It's neutral. Now when you look at your sulfate ion, you have one sulfur and four oxygens, and overall it equals a negative two charge. You still know that oxygen has a negative two, so that means four times negative two, which is a negative eight, so something plus negative eight is equal to negative two, sulfur is gonna have a positive six charge. So when you guys look at this oxalate ion, C2O4 with a negative two charge, you still have two carbons and you have four oxygens. We all know oxygen's got a negative two charge, so something plus negative 8 is equal to negative 2. Carbon in this very special situation is going to have a positive 3 charge. Though not listed on your periodic table, this is what the actual charge is. Now, remember, they're called selected oxidation states, which means there are others there. They just didn't give them to you. Yeah, New York State wanted very few for carbon, to not confuse you guys, but there are others. Yeah. Always start with the element that you know for sure because it only has one selected oxidation state. And that's most of the time always the oxygen. Yeah, it's always the oxygen or even the hydrogen because usually hydrogen is just positive one. Um, so always start with the elements that you definitely know are the values that they are and then continue with the math. Okay. And looking at our last one, our phosphate ion, you have one phosphorus, four oxygens. Plug in the charge for oxygen. So something plus negative eight is negative three. Therefore, my phosphorus has to have a positive five charge. So now let's look at this formula. And using this formula, let's identify all the different charges of the different ions and elements that we see. And yes, it is unbalanced. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's you missing don't have to hydrogen. Worry about it. Yep. We know. We know. Okay. Done purposely. So if you have copper plus nitric acid, it's going to give you copper ions, and it's also going to give you nitrogen monoxide gas. So the very first thing is we notice we have copper solid, which is going to be neutral. You also notice you have a copper ion. It already gives you a charge, so we assign it as a positive 2. However, if you look at HNO3, or nitric acid, we now have to break that down into the different charges for each element. Now, hydrogen and oxygen are very easy to determine, so we're going to start with those. Okay. So looking again at the different elements, we can say that you have one nitrogen, one hydrogen, and three oxygens. And everything's equal to zero, no charge. Okay. Let's plug in the value right away for oxygen because we know what that is. So we can say that nitrogen plus hydrogen is a negative six, and that is equal to zero. So if you look at the charges on the periodic table, the only way you can do the math correctly to make it neutral is if hydrogen has a positive one charge, nitrogen has a positive five charge, and oxygen has a negative two charge. Which means when you do the math, you have a positive six and a negative six, which neutralizes the entire compound. And now we look at nitrogen monoxide. And again, this is the setup of the formula. We add in our oxygen charge, and then we try to figure out what we need for nitrogen, which is a positive two. So now that we have all the charges, we can determine which one's oxidizing and reducing. Um, but we want you guys to try this out. So why don't you pause the video and try both of these examples. So when you assign all the different oxidation numbers, you should notice that you should get these numbers for these elements. Same with these. Remember, if it's a lone element, it's got to have a zero. If it's in a compound or an ionic bond, it has to have some sort of charge. Lightning strikes. Um, so redox reaction actually takes place in nitrogen-oxygen when lightning bolts hit the air. 
Um, so the N2 plus the O2 in the, in the atmosphere um, react and they form nitrogen monoxide gas when the lightning hits. And then we want you guys to also work this one out. We will be checking for it in your notes, but we're not going to do it for you. Yeah, and notice that we're saying that it is a redox reaction, which means reduction and oxidation has to be present here. And this is going to be the last problem that we're doing today. But again, I want you guys to pause the video right now and try to do this one on your own. So when you analyze and you start to look at all the different compounds, let's first look at manganese oxide. You notice you have one manganese and two oxygens. You plug in your charge for oxygen, and you notice your manganese has to have a positive four charge. Okay. So now that you're looking at your hydrochloric acid, you're noticing you have four moles of it, but that has no influence on the charge. You're just looking at the element. So you should notice that you have a positive one for your hydrogen and a negative one for your chlorine. So manganese chloride, we're going to put the charges in. We know that chlorine is negative one. And then we're going to figure out that manganese is positive two from this. There you go. What do you think the charge will be for that diatomic chlorine? Well, chlorine's by itself, it's uncombined, so anything uncombined is always zero. There you go. And now your last one is going to be water. So you know that oxygen, oxygen is going to have a negative two charge. Oxygen. And you know the hydrogen has to have a positive one charge. That oxygen is very tricky. Waka, 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 waka. <laughs> Um, water is always going to be plus one, minus two. Okay. You're going to see it a lot. Just memorize. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you have any questions, talk to us in class tomorrow. We're going to be doing some oxidative uh, states. We're going to be analyzing and identifying them in class tomorrow. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Hope you guys enjoy this video and have a nice night. Adios.